Final Scratch Tapes, The Master Recordings. Episode 3, The Call-In Show. What follows is a transcript of broadcast 1F22 of The Vinyl Scratch, approximately one week following the Spitfire interview. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? <laughs> nope. It's just rock. You're listening to K-Cult, and there's no escape from The Vinyl Scratch. You're listening to the number one radio show in Equestria. I'm your host, the devious disc diva herself, DJ Pony. And I'm Octavia. The sane one. So, Octi, want to tell the listeners about our date yesterday? Stop calling it a date. It wasn't a date. Why? You're ashamed of me, aren't you? Yes, very. <gasps> How could you say such a thing? What happened to the proper lady I used to know? She met you. That's what happened. <laughs> you never look me in the eye anymore. <laughs> All right, stop <laughs> acting silly and tell them if you're going to. So, listeners, I actually went to Octavia's concert last night at Blue Blood Hall. Since, apparently, any no-showing stuck-up coward prince can own a theater now. You're still mad he didn't show up so you could make fun of him, aren't you? Not at all. I can make fun of him whether he shows up or not. It's just more entertaining to see the look on his face. <laughs> You're horrible sometimes. You know that, right? Octavia doesn't want to admit it, but she's smirking right now. <clears throat> no, I'm not. Don't listen to her. Liar. Anyway, Octavia's band had a concert there the other night. It's an ensemble, not a band. Whatever, same thing. For those of you who don't know, she plays the cello. Usually classical isn't my thing. Because, you know, it's actual music and not just noise like you're used to. But... Octavia was really good, and so was the rest of her band. It was very nice, moving music, and all of you should go listen. Oh. Well, thank you. That's a very sweet thing to say. Does that mean we can make out? Oh, shut up. Okay, later then. Whatever. So, after the concert, we went out to eat. As a date. It wasn't a date. It was a date. And I can prove it to you with sheer logic. Oh, this should be good. We went to a classy restaurant, right? Of course. As if I'd go anywhere else. And our table had candles, right? Yes. But what does that have to do with... So it was a candlelit dinner. Well, so to speak. You had your hair done. And you were wearing perfume. I was in public. Of course I was. Just because you don't care about your appearance doesn't mean I should... You asked me if I thought it smelled nice. Well, it was a new perfume. I... I was curious. There's nothing weird about that. Uh-huh. So it mattered to you what I think. No, I didn't mean... You wanted to know if I was impressed or not. <laughs> that's... Mm. Now you're just grasping at straws. And that's not even getting into the stuff you said after a few drinks. What? About how much you really loved working with me. Okay, no drink is strong enough to make me say that. And that it was so nice that we were getting closer. It was quite adorable, really. I'm quite positive you made that part up. <laughs> Clearly you're still in denial of your undying love for me. You're the one who's in denial here. Can we just drop the subject, please? Okay, fine. But it was totally a date. So, listeners, if you'd like to see my ensemble and I play, we're doing shows all this week, including one tomorrow night. From what I understand, tickets are going fast, so you'd better hurry if you want to see us. See? I am rubbing off on you. What? What are you talking about? You're shamelessly promoting yourself. That's definitely something I'd do. I am not... Wait. Wait. Jeez, you're... You're actually right. Yep. Oh, God. What have I become? <laughs> well, folks, today's show is going to be a little different. We don't have a celebrity guest today, but today is special because you, listeners, can be on the show. I'm sure all you listeners at home have heard of the latest craze, the telephone. Well, we happen to have one right here in the studio. <laughs> Neat, huh? I still don't see what the big fuss is about it. You just don't understand progress. Get with the times, Granny. What did you just call me? Anyway, this magical invention will let you talk directly to us from anywhere in the whole world. Provided that you've purchased a phone or can mooch one off of your friends. This thing has only been around for a week. 
how did you get one anyway? We got one for free, thanks to our new sponsors. Speaking of which, this episode is brought to you by the Derpy Express, the most endearing delivery company in Equestria. Derpy Express, making sure your package gets sent in the general direction it's supposed to go. Since when do you actually care about doing the ads? Since our sponsors started sending us cool stuff. Look, they sent muffins, too. So, folks, if you ever wanted to chat with us, now's your chance. Just call and you'll be on the air with us. Feel free to ask us any question you want, no matter how intimate or embarrassing. You know, you really shouldn't say that last part so cheerfully. Just give us a call at... Um... Hang on. I have the number written down here somewhere. No. No. Stop wrecking stuff. Come on, I've got this perfectly under... Oops. I'll, uh... I'll clean that up later. Oh, wait, here it is. Just give us a call at... Let's see here. Four. Okay, give us a call at four, and you'll be on the show. You couldn't remember that? Well, when am I ever going to have to dial my own number? Hey, looks like we have our first caller. Hello, you're on the air with the vinyl scratch. Hello, Radio DJ Pony. That's quite a strange voice you got there. You're a... pony? Yes, uh, sure. We are perfectly normal Earth horse ponies. Uh, we was just wondering, is your refrigerator running? Sorry, we don't have a refrigerator in the studio. Well then, you... Huh? Uh, uh... What I say now? Hang up! But what is joke? Hang up, stupid! Um, uh, let us give you call back. Huh. Well, that was different. Ooh, yes. I can really see the usefulness in this invention. Okay, now you answer it. What? No. You answer it. I answered last time. Now it's your go. I... I don't feel like it. Why? <laughs> you scared? Like I'd be afraid of something so stupid! <sighs> okay, fine. Hello? Ah! <laughs> Stop laughing! I just didn't expect it to be so loud. I was startled, that's all. I... Shh, shh, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, I'm here now. I won't let the bad phone hurt you. Everything is going to be okay. I hate you. <laughs> Love you too, honey. Sorry about that, caller. You're on the air with the vinyl scratch. Um, ha. I'm sorry if I scared Miss Octavia. Is she all right? No, sweetie, it's fine. I'm all right. Aw, oh, you sound adorable, caller. Did you have a question for us? Well, mm -hmm. yeah, before Twilight finds out her phone's gone. Well, me and my friends are just wondering, how did y'all get your key mark? Aha, now there's a good question. You want to go first, Octi? What? Oh, um... No, you go ahead. No problem. Actually, there's a story in that. It all started after I tried to put on my innocent little concert only to be cracked down by the establishment. That tends to happen when you steal an accordion from a police chief. So after that, our school had a dance. As part of my punishment, I was told I couldn't go. I had to stay in class and write an essay about what I had done wrong. I begged them to reconsider, but my teacher said no. It was... <sighs> It was very traumatic. You were so guilty, though. I was a victim of circumstance. I wasn't going to take that punishment lying down. So I decided it was time for me to strike against the system. So I flipped my paper over, wrote sticking it to the man on the back, and started to look for a way into the dance. Luckily, I knew my way around the ventilation system pretty well. How could you possibly know that? I, um, had to use it to sneak out of school all the... Other times I was a victim of circumstance. You were one of those kids who never learned a lesson from anything, weren't you? Hey, I learned plenty of lessons. And one of them just happened to be how to sneak out of school. I got much more use out of that than I ever did geometry, let me tell you. Anyway, when I finally crawled into the gym, they just had the gym teacher at a turntable playing slow songs. Stuff with no beat, no rhythm, no soul. Every filly was just standing around. No one was having fun. Clearly, it was my civic duty to do something. Why is it that every time you say something is your civic duty, it involves criminal behavior? So I quickly snuck back to my desk at school, retrieving some of my favorite records. Wait, you kept records at school? Why? It's not like you'd have anything to play them on. I loved music, so I took records with me everywhere, even if I couldn't play them. 
<laughs> you might not be able to believe this, but I was a weird kid back then. You're a weird kid now. Then, I returned to the gym and used my cunning and stealth to disable the downer music. Luckily, the gym teacher thought the turntable was broken and left to find some pony to fix it. Guess he wasn't smart enough to check if it was unplugged first. <laughs> Once he left, I plugged it back in and heroically commandeered the turntable for great justice. Nothing about that was even remotely heroic. So, I flooded the entire gym with the sounds of rock and roll. Every pony suddenly got in the mood and started dancing. They were so happy. Every pony went from not having fun to having the time of their lives, all because of me. That's when I realized the tremendous power of music and rock. It wasn't just about having something nice to dance to. It was about speaking to your very soul. Hearing something that can make you feel like lightning is running through your veins and a wildfire is spreading in your heart. A sound that can shake the heavens and make the entire air electric. That's what I felt every time I heard music, and I wanted every pony else to feel the same. All they needed was some pony to guide them, to show them the power of rock. And in that moment, I knew I was the only one who could do it. Wherever there was rock, you would look who was towering over the speakers, who was at the turntable, and you would know it was Vinyl Scratch. <laughs> um, uh, and then you got your key mark? What? Oh, yeah. Then that happened. And, uh, then I was put in detention for about a month and a half. Wow, that was a cool story. Um, little fillies, I just want to tell you not to imitate anything Vinyl said. She's not exactly a role model. She's more like the perfect bad example. Okay, well, why don't you give them a better example? How'd you get yours? Oh, well, it wasn't exactly as fun as your story. I'm sure no one wants to hear it. No, tell us. Well, <clears throat> uh, when I was a filly, I lived in Manhattan. I came from a very good family, but I didn't exactly fit in. You wouldn't know it now, but I used to be rather shy. Lots of ponies used to pick on me. I started taking music classes, and I really liked the cello. <laughs> Actually, the only reason I picked that instrument at first was that I'd have something really heavy I could swing at the bullies. So I practiced really hard, and then one day we had a concert at school. I had a solo and everything. I was so excited about it. Ah, oh, I see. So you killed and got your cutie mark, right? And then every pony respected you? <laughs> um, not exactly. Uh, when I got to my solo... I actually got really nervous, and I... I ended up hitting a few wrong notes. Well, more like a lot of wrong notes. I'm almost positive I hit the right note at least once. Oh. It was so bad, some ponies in the audience started laughing. And a few parents, too. Um... I started crying. Every pony in Ben got really mad at me. They said I ruined the concert. They teased me in band class. I ended up getting picked on even more than I did before. I got so depressed I didn't want to play anything ever again. All I wanted to do was to make music that other ponies would enjoy. Kind of like you, Vinyl, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess. That... Wow. Oh! Don't worry. The story has a happy ending. Eventually, I got so determined to prove how good I was, I practiced the cello more and more. I must have practiced more than any other pony in band class. Then I finally begged my music teacher for another solo in the next concert. She agreed, despite every pony saying I'd just mess up. So, finally, when it was my turn, I played, despite how nervous I was. I gave a beautiful solo that ended up with every pony clapping. And that's how I got my cutie mark. Wow. It was a lot of hard work. But in the end, everything was worth it. <laughs> Sorry if my story wasn't as cool as Vinyl's. No, it wasn't as cool as mine. It was way cooler. Thanks, Vinyl. Well, um, 
Thanks, 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 than
Hey, wait. Er, are you crying? <laughs> no. Of course I'm not. Don't... Don't, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I, I'm fine. Octavia, what happened? <laughs> it's nothing. It's stupid. Tell me. My show is cancelled. All of our shows at the theater were cancelled. What? Why? They said due to lack of interest. Lack of... A oh, lack of interest, my flank! The concert was packed last night! <sighs> well, she mentioned something else. Apparently the prince saw my show last night. She said that he... Well, that he thought it wasn't very good. What? Mediocre was the word she used. So he cancelled the show? Well, she didn't exactly say that, but yes. <laughs> it looks that way. Huh. Well, would you excuse me for just one second, sweetie? <laughs> I told you not to call me that. <laughs> Hello, operator? Yes, could you connect me to Prince Blueblood? Lionel, don't! Just a second, Octi. Yes, I would like to speak to him. <laughs> oh, yes, he's expecting this call. Yes, I'll hold. You are speaking with His Royal Majesty, Prince Blueblood. How may I help you? Hi there, Mr. Blueblood! Uh, no, that's Prince Blueblood. Oh, sorry, Prince Blueblood, of course. Of course. <laughs> My name is Vital Scratch. Oh, the disc jockey. Yep, the DJ. You were that lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, the crazy one. This isn't about the interview I cancelled, is it? No, no, this isn't about that interview you cancelled. Not at all. Just wanted a little talk. A little chat, you know. Oh. Uh, well then, um, that's a wonderful talking to... How are you? How am I? Well, <laughs> that's the funny part. I'm... I'm really quite mad. Mad? At me? Yes, at you. At me? Whatever for? Well, I'll tell you. You see, I hear you didn't much care for my friend's concert last night and had it cancelled. Well, this must be some sort of a misunderstanding on your end. No, 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 I'm quite certain it's not a misunderstanding. Could we discuss this some other time? I'm getting a pony petty right now, and it's quite... No, I think we should talk about this now. <laughs> see, it's like this. Final. Look. Princey, it's like this. I don't know what kind of ivory tower upbringing you had, but clearly if you were listening to my friend's show and you found it, um, mediocre, then you don't understand taste well. Maybe you've just never listened to music played by some pony who wasn't manufactured in whatever snob factory you get most of the musicians who play at your second-rate theater. Apparently, you don't know what it sounds like when some pony actually puts their whole heart and soul into their music, or you just don't understand that I was at yesterday's show and know that Octavia's band killed. Standing ovation and everything. Maybe you have a difference of opinion, and that's fine. <laughs> Every pony has a right to their own opinion. And since you so graciously gave my friend your opinion, I shall return the favor by expressing my opinion of you. Oh, now, now, you shouldn't interrupt other ponies when they're talking. But I can understand that urge. I do love to talk. <laughs> now, my opinion is that I think you canceled my friend's show because of what I have said on this show before about you. Namely, that I believe you are a bland, unintelligent, cowardly, prissy, stuck-up, laughable excuse for a stallion with a silver spoon shoved so, so very far up his flank that you cannot possibly relate to any pony anywhere ever. Now, I have said that, not Octavia. It is fair for you to hate me. After all, that's my job. I make fun of ponies. It's entertaining. I mean, even Celestia understood that. She still lets me say what I like, even though she could easily ball me up and throw me into a black hole if she felt like it. Mistakes she's made aside, that's a classy move. She's a class mare. You, however, are not classy. You're... Well, the words I think of can't really be said over the air. After all, fillies listen to us. Lots of ponies listen to us. Lots of listeners who now, thanks to me, are now completely aware that you, Prince Blueblood, are the sole reason why Octavia is not having any more shows at your theater. My listeners like Octavia, Mr. Blueblood. They don't like you. 
No pony likes you. Heck, I have to wonder if Celestia even likes you. Or if your own mother does. Assuming you know you actually have a mother and didn't just slither out of a pile of filth one day. But anyway, I have to go now. I just wanted to inform you that I'm sure my fans will have a very, very happy response to you depriving them of the chance to see my co-host play. Actually, now that I think of it, that won't be the case. Because you know what? I've got the bits, I've got the resources, I can put on my own concert, and we'll do it right outside your theater for free, whether you like it or not. No, sir, I don't really care if you threaten to arrest me or not. I'll go straight to Celestia if it comes to that. Say whatever you like, I don't answer to you or anyone. Now, Prince, I think I have thoroughly wasted enough of my time listening to you. You should be glad that you canceled our interview because, quite frankly, if I see you face to face, you will be picking your teeth up from the floor. Good day, sir. Well, then, I think that about wraps up today's show. Well, do you feel any better? I... Yes, I do feel a little better. You didn't have to do that, you know. No, actually, I'm pretty sure I did. You really thought my show was that good? Octi, do you even have to ask? No, I guess I don't. Final. Yeah? I'm glad I met you. You're very sweet. Even if you are completely crazy. Um, yes. Well... Thank you. Uh, um... Wait. Are... You're blushing? Seriously? No! <clears throat> no, of course not. Uh, I'm too cool for that. <laughs> sure you are, Vinyl. Sure you are. Well, listeners, that's our show for today. Assuming I'm not thrown in jail or sent to the moon, we'll be back tomorrow for a live broadcast from our concert. Wait, what? You... You were serious about that? Of course I am. When am I ever not serious? Um, like, 100% of the time. Yeah, well, I'm serious about this. Well, listen. I'm... I appreciate the gesture vinyl, but you can't just set up a concert in the middle of Cantalot in one day. Without a permit. Without any kind of permission. Oh? Just watch me, Octi. Just watch me. Also, I think I'll have to go buy a new phone, too. In the third episode of the Vinyl Scratch Tapes, The Master Recordings... Hannah Kay played Vinyl Scratch. Wolfie played Octavia. The Robot Butterfly played Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and the Blue Blood Theatre Manager. Mr. B played Rover. Great Din played Background Diamond Dog. Lucky Chan played Sweetie Belle. And narration was given by DJ Shamrock. Special thanks to Sir and Flersheim, Soda, A Pony Moose, Lord Sabre, The Living Tombstone, Sound of the Aviators, Pogo Sama, and General Mumble. The original story was written by Corey W. Williams, and the production was directed, edited, and produced by Emerald Page, Wolfie, and The Jam Jar.